Mike Owens with Inside Fighting here. Always a pleasure to be joined by Benil Dariush. Benil, always a pleasure, my man. How things are you today? Hey, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Uh, how are you and how did you the rest of your trip in England treat you since we last spoke? Honestly, um, some people might not like what I'm about to say, but Manchester was very cool. London for me wasn't so good. I mean, you know, I, I had my family and kids. That's probably why. But if I was young and single, I'd be like, okay, London's cool. But as, you know, as a family man, it was kind of lame. What did you make on Giga's fight against Arnold? I mean, we talked about it beforehand, but what was your assessment of, of the fight at UFC 304? He looked fantastic in round one. And in, uh, at the end of the round, he rushed. Uh, with, he threw a knee and he's like, oh, I'm going to finish him right there. And in that rush, Arnold landed a uh, up kick mm. that um, that was so effective. It, it, it made his uh, his en entire arm go numb. Uh, and then Giga's actually had multiple surgeries since. So, you know, um, once the arm went numb, he couldn't lift it up. It, it was a totally different fight. So round one, he looked good. And then round two was all uh, Arnold. Uh, he took over uh, two and three. So, um, you know, it's not an excuse because Arnold threw the kick. He did mm. the damage. So that damage caused uh, caused the, the fight to change. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think if Giga, when, when he's on, he's, he's very difficult to deal with. And Arnold did a great job. Who would you like to see for him next out of interest? I mean, I'm not sure on timelines, and obviously that's kind of the biggest factor, but is there a fight you look out there that you look for I think would be would be next for him, good for him next? For uh, Giga? Or for are we Giga. Talking about, um, Giga. See, I, I have to look at the, the landscape. I, you know, I want to say Emmett, but also, you know, um, Emmett might be ranked higher. Uh, I, I would have to... I have to look who else is it there in the rankings and who who makes sense, but um, Giga's probably not going to fight till like February, March, if I had to guess, mm -hmm. just from uh, all the injuries and and and, and um, surgeries he's uh, coming off of. Well, look, let's send the conversation back to yourself. I remember at one point we discussed about back in London was your uh, your rehab, uh, and obviously, I remember, if memory if memory serves, you talked about the potential for you to have. A surgery be required? Was that required in the end? And where are you at in terms of your recovery and getting back to action? No, fortunately, we were able to, you know, get the stem cells, PRP into my knee and, and a ton of physical therapy. And uh, I'm, I'm good to go. I've spoken to the UFC uh, and I, I think we're looking at January uh, for the return. Uh, don't really have a name specifically. Uh, the, there have been mentions of Hinato Moicano and maybe somebody else, but but that's it. Like it's just been mentioned. Nothing's been confirmed yet. Because mm. I did see you do another interview a couple of months ago where you were trying to get on the MSG cards, uh, UFC three hundred nine. Was there a reason why that never happened? Was it just timelines or opponents? Yeah. So I never got that call. And and the problem with that is is like if you call me now, it's hard because I'm I'm uh, you know, thirty five, a lot bigger than I used to be. So getting mm. down to 55 i need i need the a full camp so ideally i need anywhere between nine to ten weeks to to get down properly if i if i rush it um it, it's going to hinder my performance and i want to make sure next time i step into the octagon i have a perfect performance we'll be back to the video in just a second but first the summer is unfortunately over the weather is getting colder but the action just keeps getting hotter and the nba season is finally back and inside fighting is happy to announce that we have once again partnered up with our friends over at DraftKings to bring you guys another amazing offer where right now if you're a new DraftKings customer go download the DraftKings sportsbook app bet five dollars and you'll receive two hundred dollars of bonus bets instantly by using our promo code inside fighting when you sign up if sports betting is not yet available in your state do not worry just go play DraftKings daily fantasy sports get in on the action there again new DraftKings customers who bet five dollars will receive two hundred dollars of bonus bets instantly just by using promo code inside fighting only at the DraftKings sportsbook app has it been Difficult in any way, not, not fighting this year? I mean, I check your record. You've fought every single year since you joined the UFC. I think it was in 2024, so just, just right on a decade. Has it been been challenging in, in any way? Yeah, it, it, it's it's definitely been challenging. It's um, 
it's been challenging and it's been it's it's just weird you know like uh it's yeah uh, i understand it's, you'll have your ups and downs so i you know i, I had my ups for a while and now i'm, I'm kind of down but like just not to be able to fight has been weird. I, I enjoy it so much. I've I even considered going to 170 just so I can fight more often. But, you know, I, I don't think I'm done with 55 yet. So um, I, I've, I've been trying to um, really focus on uh, recovery as far as, you know, uh, uh, TBI, uh, the brain injuries, things like that. I want to make sure when I get back into the octagon, you know, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. No, no knee issues, no whatever. I want to be fresh and just go out there and do my best. Um, so that's kind of been why also I've been waiting for so long. I've been jumping in the hyperbaric. I've been doing every recovery thing you can think of, cold, hot, whatever. I've, I've, I've tried it all. <laughs> um, so it's a point you mentioned there about January. There, there, there's obviously be a pay-per-view pay per in the middle of the month, and then generally speaking, there's one or two fight nights either side. I know that you haven't discussed specifics about opponents or dates, but would there be a preference to be on, on a pay-per-view or to maybe get back in those headline and spots well, on one of the fight nights? Listen to this. I, I'm hearing the pay-per-view is going to be in LA, and that's a 30-minute, 40-minute drive for me. So in an ideal world, that that's, that's the card mm-hmm. I'm on. And, you know, uh, I get to fight somebody uh, in the top 10, whatever. That would be ideal. But, but uh, it doesn't always work like that. We'll see how it goes. How much interest do you have in the Hanato Moicano fight? Out of interest? And what, what did you make of his, his victory at UFC Paris over Benoit saint he, he looked fantastic against uh, Benoit saint So I, I, I respect uh, he, he had a great game plan and he was able to execute it. When he got on top, he, he put so much pressure and he did so much damage that uh benoit could never really recover um and then um as far as fighting him you know he's a great athlete so it, it would be a great contest i always want to fight the best guys so if that's the fight then that's the fight i i, I you know i i, I would appreciate that fight that, i think that would be a great fight I'm, I'm sure there's other names too um but i haven't really heard anything else like you know i, I thought maybe dan hooker would be a fight but uh it was never brought up, so I said whatever. We'll see. Um, whoever is whoever is next. Obviously, it's tough fights and also rankings uh, at this mm-hmm. point matter. So that's kind of how I was looking at it. So we'll we'll see whoever's near me, and we'll try to fight somebody there. When Henato beat Drew Dober back in February, I think I interviewed him the week or two after, and he actually called for the fight against you at UFC three hundred one back in Brazil. I think that was Rio or Brazil. It was the Brazilian cards back in May. Um, so it's kind of interesting looking at the year that he's had and kind of the, the, the growth and star power, this whole Money Moicano stick that he's now rocking. Uh, it's a, I would imagine that's a much more interesting fight yeah. given the, the year that he's had. Yeah, I mean, he's had a great year. And I, I actually, th- that, that's the other thing about him. I actually really like the guy. So it's like, man, I kind of, you know, if there's somebody else, I would fight somebody else. But this fight makes a lot of sense. I get it. Um, I, I like his whole capitalism thing. I, I love that. And obviously... Jesus is King. I, I I'm I'm 100 with that. So he's he's been he's like his whole thing the the shtick you call it. I think it's been great. I I know he does a podcast. Obviously having kids, I don't have a whole lot of time to myself, but I'm sure he's killing it on that too. He's just he, bro. He knows you know he, he gets it. He gets he it, you. and he's able to uh, do what he needs to do. Um. Out of interest, and it, when I ask this next question, it's difficult because I wasn't sure if I'd categorize Hanato as a prospect or as a veteran. But do you like fighting guys on the come up, guys who are making their way up, or would you prefer to fight guys who've also been in the game as long as you have and knocked those kind of veteran versus veteran matchups, if you will? I don't really have a preference. I, I want to fight the best guys. So, like, you know, when I fought Armand, it's because I thought he was the best. When I fought Gamrot, I thought he was a great up and comer, and he's He's the best guy I can fight at this moment. You know, th- that was really it. It, it. And then, you know, I, I fought Tony Ferguson. I, I, I fought Charles. I don't I don't have a preference. Uh, the goal is the belt and fighting the best guys in the world. And and I think right now um, I, I've done that in the last, like, couple of years. So I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I want to just continue to do that. If Hanato's next, Hanato's next. If it's somebody else, then it's somebody else. If Benil Dariush was the UFC matchmaker for a day, how would you matchmake the UFC lightweight division? Because when I look at the top 10, the only fight that's actually currently booked is Charles versus Chandler at UFC 309. So the rest of your division is wide open for, for matchups. 
so we have um, Makachev most likely is going to fight Armand. Mm. Charles is fighting Chandler. Um, I would, you, you know, if you're talking money, you could do Justin Gagey versus Dustin Poirier for uh, another another fight there. I think that would be a, a big one. But another option is is to have Dan Hooker fight one of those guys. Mm. Um, he's lost to Dustin Poirier, so that fight I think is less appealing. I think the fight that makes more sense is him against Justin Gagey. That's an option. You know, um, that, 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 I think that covers the top five. Mm. Uh, um, unless you, you, I guess one person's left out. I guess I could fight whoever's left out ideally because I'm ranked number seven, I think, or six. Eight, I don't I know exactly. Okay. Uh, I don't know who's in front of me. So, uh, it just depends on who's in front of me and I would, I would kind of just look for them. What just, do you do? Depending on that. What do you do with Conor McGregor? Who do you who do you give him next? I don't think he's fighting at fifty five. So I, but I mean, if you if if Connor's genuinely coming back, um, uh, I would. Any of those last three guys, I think, are ideal opponents for him. Uh, Gagey, Poirier, or um, or Hooker, I guess. Um, I think Chandler uh, is an uh, is not a bad opponent as well because. Stylistically, it's a good fight for Connor, but I, I I think Dan Hooker would be a good fight as well. Not not because Dan's not tough, but Dan is going to stand up with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 stylistically, Dan isn't like is a volume guy. He's not going to take you out with with one or two shots. While Justin Gagey is going to tear up your legs, and you know Dustin Poirier seems to have Connor's number, even if Connor doesn't like that. Uh, it, it, that's what it seems like. But I mean. Connor could fight anybody. It it's, 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 it seems to me when when it comes to Connor, it's not so much about the other side. It's just about Connor. Whoever Connor fights is it, it's the biggest fight. Mm. Out of interest, how do you see the fight between the rematch between Charles and Michael Chandler playing out in just over two weeks' time? I don't see much of a difference, to be honest with you. I, I mean, Michael Chandler could be in fantastic shape, and and he could be sharper with all this time that he's had. But I mean, Charles has been fighting, and he's been fighting mm-hmm. tough guys. So it's it's not like Charles is, you know, Charles is 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 in my opinion locked in, and I think he's gonna be he's gonna be just fine. I I, I would favor him heavily, but, uh, you know, uh, Chandler could always pull it off. Um, I'm not sure if you got a chance to watch Saturday's fight, but I have to get your thoughts if it's all on. Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway wow. because it certainly felt like such a big fight certainly in the build up it certainly felt like such a anticipated fight so just your reaction to what? Ilya Taporia's victory over Max Holloway last Saturday man Ilya Tapora is so freaking good I mean listen um, I don't know why we always have to talk about the best boxer in the UFC <laughs> but he's definitely a great boxer is he better than Max that's that's the thing here's here's what happened Max started doing very well in, in the fight and Ilya being a full, a complete martial artist, he used takedowns. He also used calf kicks. Mm. I think those leg kicks really messed up, uh, uh, Max's, uh, Max's base and abilities. And, and then that allowed Ilya to get that knockout. I really don't believe that knockout would have come if those calf kicks still land. Like you see how hard he kicked that guy's like Max's leg. It was bro. He's so good because mm. You know, if it's just boxing, I, I think it would have been a five round fight and it would have gone either way. Because I think I think it was just boxing it would have been very close. But the fighter, as soon as you know the boxing was getting close, he's like, All right, boom, there's a leg kick. Um as 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 soon as, you know, he he felt like he had an opportunity to get a takedown, he shot on Max. Like Ilya is is um Bro, he's a full package. Like, if if you're trying to explain to people what a uh, what a complete fighter is, he, he's a good example. He has submissions, he has knockouts, he's got it all. Can Can I ask you from a from a professional's opinion? Because Ilya keeps saying that he's the next evolution of the sport. He says that he's he his style is the next evolution. In your opinion, are you seeing him do things differently to kind of what we've seen before and and you know evolve in the game? I think what he means by that is he's just the next wave. He's mm-hmm. doing what everybody else does, but he's just doing it better. Mm-hmm. And and that that includes in mixing it up. So like I said, 
even with uh, Wolkanovski, if you watch him fight Wolkanovski, Wolkanovski was throwing a lot of volume, landing a lot of jabs and whatever, but then he started going for that calf kick or, 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 or low kick. And as soon as that happened, he made Wolkanovski do a full spin from a calf yeah. kick. So, like, as soon as that happened, it took Volkanovski off his game and and that, that allowed him to land those big, big shots. So, I think he is the next wave. And I think um, he's not doing anything different than anybody else. I think he's just doing doing everything very well. And, and you know, obviously he has excellent power and he his, his ability, ability to stay in good base is is fantastic. It's one of the reasons why he's not taking so much damage. He stays in good base, and even if you land on him, it doesn't do so much damage because his hands are up, or he, he he's able to roll with the punches, and and he's able to come back basically stronger than you because he stays in in the perfect base all the time, and that's that's what makes you high level, uh, staying in good position all the time. It's uh it, it's the same thing in other sports. You you talk about uh let's say um you talk about football, and and I mean uh you know. Not American football, but like uh, soccer. Soccer, I guess. Yeah, if you're in good position all the time, that alone will get you uh, far. Mm. You don't have to be the best player, but if you know your positioning, that'll get you far. If you're talking about uh, basketball, it's the same thing. You know, you don't ha- if you you could be an average basketball player, but if you have good court management, you 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 all of a sudden uh, uh, skyrocket above everybody else. So. And I think that's really what's I, what I when I see him, that's what I, really stands out. He stays in good base, and he's able to throw power from from that good base. And then he's he's not dumb. I think that's really important. He talks a lot, at saying I'm the best boxer this, I'm the best bo- a boxer that. But when the time when the time of the fight comes, he's like, okay, I see an opening for a takedown. There it is. He, he's he thinks he's gonna box with me. Boom, calf kick, and 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 those things. I think uh, are separating him from everybody else. Uh, until people can recognize that, they're they're going to struggle fighting him. No, one hundred percent. Very, very well said. And thank you for that kind of analysis because it was good to get your perspective on that. So, t- I guess turning the conversation back to you for the last question. We're at the end of October two thousand and twenty-four. What are your goals for the next twelve-month period? Where would you like to be in your career or outside of your career by the end of October two thousand and twenty-five? Mm. By the end of 2025, I'd like to either have fought for the title and, and you know be a champion or be be number one contender. That is my goal. Uh, you know, if I'm not trying to be a champion, I'm I'm. There's no reason to be in this sport. You know, I, I don't want to fight just to fight. Uh, so, uh, that's the goal for this next year is is find the right opponents, uh, win and then get myself into a title shot and then win the title. I love it. I love it. Well, Benil, thank you as always for giving me some of your time. Great to catch up. Appreciate you doing this straight after sparring as well. So have a great and great rest of your day and we'll hopefully talk soon. Appreciate it, brother. Take care.